So yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about paper. Uh, the paper is titled Building Consistent Transactions with Consistent Replication, but the system is uh, called Taper. And the, the Taper, just so you know, is this little funny uh, pig-like uh, creature. So this is a baby Taper. Uh, so, uh, you know, what is this paper about? Uh, it's all about the distributed transactions. So traditionally, uh, when we have distributed transactions, wh wh why do we have distributed transactions in the first place? It's because we have um, like a sharded or partition system that may have um, multiple replicas. So, so, so we can have multiple replicas, like three replicas in each partition. Uh, and then we want to coordinate the transaction across uh, different partitions. Uh, and that's how we arrive to distributed transactions. That's why we need distributed transactions. So traditionally, you would have uh, these replicas. You know, they replicate the data in each partition. You would have some kind of concurrency control mechanism to uh, decide uh, the order of the transactions. And then you'll have the transactional, uh, distributed transactional protocol, like 2PC. So uh, normally, uh, the distributed transactional protocol is strongly consistent. And the replication protocol that people use in systems is strongly consistent. And uh, you know, this, this is very easy. Uh, th this makes it easier to develop new systems, to, to write systems. Because if you have a strongly consistent replication protocol, you can see this entire layer not as having like three replicas in each partition, but as having just one uh, black box, right? So if you have, if you have Paxos, you can imagine that this Paxos, you know, three replicas of Paxos is just one replicated state machine. It behaves like one computer. So it makes it a lot easier to reason about uh, the stuff that we build on top, which is a distributed transaction protocol. Uh, but uh, the paper authors, uh, they say that, well, you know, we're doing this strongly consistent uh, stuff. We, we synchronize a lot uh, twice uh, in a system. Uh, and they ask the question of whether do we actually need to synchronize uh, to run this uh, strongly consistent uh, protocols twice. Uh, and uh, instead, they suggested that uh, they're going to replace the replication protocol with uh, what they call inconsistent replication and uh, write a new uh, distributed transaction protocol that can work with this inconsistent replication. So uh, because this replication is inconsistent, you know, this transaction protocol uh, needs to be a little bit different. Like you cannot take uh, any of the shelf uh, transactional uh, transaction protocol and uh, run it on inconsistent replication. Um, so that, that's kind of the motivation of the paper. Uh, and uh, now, uh, first I'll talk about uh, what they mean about inconsistent replication. Uh, so in the traditional Paxos kind of system, we have client that will talk to um, you know, Paxos box leader, and the leader is going to talk to the replica. So we have uh, multiple RTTs in this communication chain. You know, there is one RTT going from client uh, to the leader, and obviously hearing the response back, there is one RTT for replicating inside the cluster between the leader and the replicas. Uh, and what they said that, in, you know, we, we're going to reduce this communication, right? We are not going to have the leader. We don't care about strong consistency. So we don't need this one strong guy to order everything for us. Uh, and we're going to make the client uh, directly talk to the replicas, which is obviously not uh, the new stuff. Uh, lots of uh, weekly consistent, eventual consistent systems do that. Uh, but um, also, um, you know, fast access is doing kind of this as well. Uh, so uh, this uh, inconsistent replication, like in my view, is actually somewhat close to fast access. Um, and uh, I'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later, uh, why, it's, why it's similar to fast access. Um, so what happens with this inconsistent replication? Um, unlike Paxos that will have a log of all the operations, so the commands, uh, inconsistent replication, ER, IR, um, is going to store all of these operations as an unordered operation set. So you can think of it as all operations just going into some like bag. Uh, you have a bag of operations uh, that just sits there. Uh, no order whatsoever. Um, the protocol uh, supports two types of inconsistent operations. Um, 
One is actually called inconsistent operation, and the second one uh, is a consensus operation. Yeah, so for the inconsistent operation, obviously, uh, the, the entire idea is uh, it's going to be cheap, and uh, uh, there is no consistency whatsoever between the replicas. For the consensus, uh, there is actually, uh, the, the protocol imposes more uh, guarantees for the consensus uh, in the sense that replicas have to agree, the majority of replicas have to agree uh, on some value. So there is still uh, like, uh, you know, this sense of agreement, but there is no sense of order of operation still. Uh, the inconsistent replication uh, has three uh, properties, uh, important properties rather. Uh, so the, for, the, for the fault tolerance, uh, just like Paxos, they tolerate F failures in the 2F plus 1 uh, cluster. Um, uh, they have a visibility property, which, uh, in my opinion, is kind of like a, the, the, a, a little hint of ordering from this unordered kind of system. So visibility states that for any two operations in the operation set, at least one uh, is visible to other at, uh, in every replica. So if I look at the replica and I have operations A and B, uh, uh, I have to have either A, C, B, or B, C, A, or maybe even both somehow see each other. But I cannot have uh, two operations that are completely, like, don't see the, the result of another operation. Uh, so, like, yeah, as I said, I see it as some weak form of, uh, of ordering, right? So that we can pairwise compare things uh, at the replica level. Uh, and uh, the consensus property obviously holds for the consensus operations. Uh, and uh, it, it pretty much says that the result of operation is never going to be lost. That, you know, it will be available uh, on at least one node in every possible quorum, right? So that, uh, you know, the, the, the quorum intersections, by the virtue of quorum intersections, we always have that operation. Uh, it's always visible. So, uh, yeah, I'll start with uh, inconsistent operation. Uh, even though the actual taper protocol doesn't really use that, uh, but this is like a, the more primitive built-in block. So on the first step of inconsistent operation, the client uh, of the uh, IR protocol is going to propose this operation with some uh, unique identifier. So you know, I have ID1, up one. Uh, it, it will communicate to all the replicas. Uh, the replicas, they will apply this operation tentatively uh, to, to uh, you know, essentially it's bag of operations, right? So they, they just have it there. And then uh, the replicas acknowledge back to the client saying that, hey, you know, I have this operation, it, it's all good. And uh, if the client receives the majority of uh, X, you know, F plus one X, uh, then the client is going to send another message that is going to finalize the operation. Uh, so at this point, when the operation is finalized, uh, 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 essentially it can execute on a higher level. So the uh, IR level, IR protocol is going to call the application that says, hey, the, application, the operation is finalized, uh, execute it against your application. Um, obviously, uh, because this is inconsistent operation, uh, whatever they execute uh, may be different on different nodes. Uh, like in my example here, I only applied one operation, so they have you know, the, the, the same stuff. But if uh, maybe there was another client that was running another inconsistent operation uh, up to, uh, they may have interleaved differently on different nodes. And one node may have applied up one, then up two, and another node up two, then up one. And that may have resulted in a, uh, in a different state. So, um, in, in a sense, this inconsistent operation uh, in the IR protocol allows you to replicate the operations, but it doesn't guarantee anything about the state uh, your application is going to be in. Uh, so it's, it's up to the application to figure out uh, all these inconsistencies. Now, uh, as I mentioned, this is not something that uh, the authors used in the transactional protocol, really. Uh, what they use for transactional protocol is the consensus operation. And uh, the consensus operation is uh, way more similar to how fast access uh, operates with, with some changes and like more uh, 
stuff uh, delegated to the client instead of the uh, of the leader, which is entirely here and here. Um, so it, it starts very similar. Uh, it starts with the same kind of uh, stuff. We propose a consensus operation with ID and uh, some operation. And um, so essentially, we can have either the fast path or the slow path in this uh, execution. For the fast path, we need uh, uh, 3 over 2 f plus 1. We need the fast quorum of uh, replicas right, right here to um, uh, reply back to the client with the same result. So in my figure, in my picture, I have all five of them re replying result one, result one, result one. So, you know, we have this uh, uh, fast quorum, uh, and that means that we can take the fast pass. And in fast pass, the client already knows, okay, everyone has the same, like the, the result of the operation is, uh, is in the fast quorum. So uh, first of all, it's okay for me to return back to the client layer, right? So the, to the application. So this return to the application is not a message. It's just uh, calling the higher level uh, application saying, hey, the, the operation, the consensus operation has been done. So, so this client is like in the driver of the uh, inconsistent replication. Um, at, at the same time, asynchronously, the client is going to uh, once again tell every single replica that, hey, you know, I, I have this operation with result one. So remember the result one. Right, so this is the same result that they replied back. So uh, uh, at this point, uh, you know, the, the, the nodes will update their application again with the result one, which you know, in, in my example is, is, is unchanged because we took the fast pass. Now, the very uh, important thing to notice here is that um, the replicas execute this operation that they see from the client as soon as they receive it. So they execute it against the, the application layer. So this execute consensus is the call to the, to the higher level, to the application. So it gets out of that uh, IR driver and executes it against whatever the application needs to do with this operation one. And that application is providing the result. So uh, in some cases, uh, when we have conflicts, right? So if one node re uh, replied, if, if some nodes replied with result two, you know, some nodes replied with result one, at this point, I don't have the fast quorum. I don't have four out of five nodes, which would be the fast quorum in this case. Uh, you know, and, and I have the nodes in this divergent state, right? They applied the operation, they execute the consensus operation. It's still tentative, but they have the result and it's different result. So I will need to uh, reconcile the result one and result two somehow. So uh, this reconciliation is done in the slow pass and uh, kind of driven by the client again. So this is the difference from the fast passes where the, in fast passes you would maybe use the leader to resolve the conflict. Here you resolve the conflict at the client. Um, and uh, as I said, the, the client is not really like the outside client. It's, it's the application that's running this transaction uh, protocol or the IR, uh, the application that is using the IR. So that application uh, is going to have uh, some function to resolve uh, the conflicts uh, coming from the IR. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so th this, this resolution logic is essentially left out to the, to the application that uses uh, IR. Uh, but when this um, resolution happens, the driver, the client is going to send the result result, uh, RR, uh, back to all the nodes. Right, and at this point, these nodes will have to apply this result result, and uh, uh, once they apply it, uh, only then, uh, after the client has heard the driver, has heard of uh, majority of acts, then it can return back to the higher level to the application, saying that the consensus operation has finished. So you, you can see that the slow pass is taking a little bit more. It's going to take one extra RCT before. Uh, the control is returned back to the uh, client application before the application that uses IR. Uh, uh, I don't know what happened. Oh. Okay, I have a technical problem. Looks like I ran out of slides. One second. 
I'm not sure why I don't have the full copy of my slides. One second. So uh, the paper talks a little bit more about uh, things like fault tolerance and recovery. Like what do we do when, uh, for example, the client fails and it cannot uh, drive this protocol, right? Um, so there are some things that, uh, uh, that are in the protocol to address the things. I'm not going to talk too much about this, but um, uh, the bigger, uh, I guess, points from this uh, inconsistent replication is that Replicas may diverge, and that's totally fine. Uh, but uh, there is this sync and merge mechanism that uh, allows you to bring the replicas into uh, kind of consistent to the same state, rather, right? So uh, eventually, once the sync and merge runs, uh, all the replicas they will uh, arrive to the same state. Uh, and uh, you know, for, for this uh, recovery, for this sync and merge, they it is actually leader based. Um, so they, they do have a leader like a, like a, like in fast access, even though the client is driving most of the stuff, and and the leader is uh, uh, essentially there to make sure that uh, we have one single um, authoritative copy of the uh, of all the operations of all the states, so that that copy from the leader can be applied to all other replicas. Uh, but um, uh, all in all, like this sync and merge happens during the view change procedure, and view change procedure, uh, it's, 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 yeah, it's a little bit more complicated, and uh, uh, I guess you can refer to the view stamp replication paper if you want to read more about this, because uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, now, once we have this inconsistent replication, uh, we can build the transactional layer on top of this inconsistent replication. Uh, so uh, in a sense, this uh, transactional protocol, transaction application protocol, TAP, uh, uh, that, that sits on top of I, A, uh, IR, uh, it, it's an application of IR. Uh, and before we you know, start building this protocol, we, we have to um, realize two key requirements for building the uh, applications on top of IR. Um, the first one is that uh, we can only do the pairwise invariant checks, right? So uh, this is because of that weak ordering that uh, the visibility rule where uh, operation A and B, uh, you know, e either one has to see uh, another, right? So you cannot have lack of visibility. Um, and, and because of that, because of this pairwise comparison, essentially you will be able, we will be able to detect the complex in transactions. Um, and uh, application must be able to change the consensus operation result. Uh, and that is the result, uh, th that is because of the slow pass and because of when the um, consensus operation is applied, uh, right? So uh, in the application, because it, it is called before we reach the consensus. So the application is going to uh, execute the operation before the consensus is actually reached, right? In the slow pass, the value may change, so the application needs to be able to accommodate this uh, and, and be able to change the consensus operation result, uh, at, at least before it's fa finalized. So the actual uh, transaction application protocol, uh, it, in happy case, works in one RCT uh, when it takes the fast pass uh, consensus operation of the uh, inconsistent replication. Uh, but in a nutshell, it's a, it's a two-phase commit protocol uh, that uses the optimistic concurrency control uh, with the timestamp ordering. So uh, because uh, inconsistent replication doesn't have um, any kind of ordering itself, uh, there is 
nothing to piggyback the transaction ordering. So they decided to use the synchronized time uh, to order the transactions. So uh, essentially transactions become ordered in a, in a timestamp order. Um, and uh, yeah, another thing is uh, obviously they use the multi-version concurrency control because uh, there may be a scenario when uh, a transaction with earlier timestamp arrives after a transaction with the later timestamp. So you need to be able to insert it into your store and you know, make sure that uh, all other things uh, keep working. Um, so uh, the protocol itself, um, I think the author is kind of divided into rather two uh, stages. Uh, so there is this, the, the, they call this execution stage, but uh, um, uh, what, what they really do in this execution stage is they construct a re write and read sets. So uh, uh, in the transaction, uh, you have, let's say, some uh, key value pairs, right? Uh, objects, uh, key, uh, key value items. Um, so you may want to write some of them. So when you write something, uh, the client is going to buffer it in a write set. Um, we're going to write the key and object and keep buffering all the right items. Um, you may also want to read something. So when the transaction needs to read something, um, it will first check if it's in the right set. If uh, the item is in the right set, then uh, it's going to read whatever you're trying to write. So there is no need to try to read it from any of the replicas. Um, so then it will check if it's in the cache, if it's if the value that has already been read in this transaction before. And then it's going to return from the cache. Finally, uh, if you know it, it doesn't have this key in, in a cache or write set, then it's going to go to a single replica. So this key, uh, uh, you know, it, it sits in, in, in some partition. It's going to go to just one replica in that partition to retrieve the key, uh, to retrieve the object. Or when the object is retrieved, uh, it also comes with the timestamp of the last transaction that modified the object. Um, so the, the timestamp is very important because um, when we actually go into the commit protocol, you know, once we have computed all the write and read sets, uh, we will use all, all these timestamps from all the you know, read values to uh, select a unique uh, proposed timestamp for our transaction. And obviously, we want to do it in such a way that uh, it's higher than all the timestamps that we have read because we don't want our transaction to intervene with the transactions that have uh, produced the values we have read. So uh, the first step for a taper client, which, by the way, is not the IR client, right? So the, the taper client sits on top of IR client, and IR client is the one talks to the replicas. Uh, so the taper client. Uh, is going to select this uh, timestamp, and in step two, it's going to uh, start this prepare phase. And in prepare phase, um, it will have the transaction that has all the read and write set with all the read timestamps uh, and the timestamp of this transaction. So it, it it has all of this in in one message and in one command, one operation rather. So this prepare operation uh, is going to be replicated uh, via the inconsistent replication as a consensus operation. So, um, so this uh, prepare, uh, it's the operation that is replicated in an uh, inconsistent replication protocol. Now, because this is distributed transaction, we may have more than one, we will have more than one partition. So in my example here, I have uh, P1, uh, partition one and P2 and three replicas in each. So, uh, the client is going to uh, use the inconsistent replication protocol to send this prepare message to every single replica in every single partition. Uh, the replicas, uh, when they receive uh, this message, they will uh, essentially individually decide whether uh, the transaction needs to be aborted or uh, uh, if it's prepared, fine. Uh, and so you will abort the transaction if, uh, for example, this transaction appears in your abort list. So if you know that you already aborted this transaction, the transaction is the same ID, then, then you don't need to do anything else. The replica is just going to send back the abort message. So th this may happen if a uh, client retries the transaction uh, with the same ID. Uh, now, uh, replicas themselves, uh, they will, uh, 
you know, be because they have this full transaction, uh, they can uh, do the comparison, they can look at the timestamps and figure out whether this transaction conflicts with any other transaction that uh, this each individual replica, you know, P21, P22, and so on, uh, each individual rep replica uh, aware of. So if a replica is conflicting, if there is a conflict exactly at the replica, it will send an abort message back to the client. So this abort message, right, uh, you know, in, in, in step four, right, they, they send the abort to prepare okay messages. So these messages, they are the results of uh, an inconsistent replication operation, right? So these are the, uh, like when we looked at the inconsistent replication, these are the results of this uh, consensus, right? So the, the result of the execution of the, of the uh, layer above the inconsistent replication. And the client, uh, you know, it only needs to receive the majority, right? Uh, or, you know, fast pass uh, uh, in, in ideal case. So it doesn't need to hear really from all of the replicas, but uh, if, uh, you know, uh, yeah, for example, in fast pass, if, if, if the fast quorum uh, has uh, sent prepare okay, uh, then uh, it's a return to even higher level to the actual application saying that, hey, transaction is done and, uh, uh, you know, then tell the nodes to commit. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the protocol in a nutshell. Uh, the client is used as the coordinator in this 2PC. So this is obviously a problem. How do they solve this problem if the client fails? And you know, the, the solution is taxes. Um, uh, so uh, that, that adds even more complexity to the protocol because now they have to have a separate taxes box uh, that sits on the replicas and uh, talks to all the replicas involved in a transaction to essentially elect a new uh, backup coordinator and, and, and make sure that all the replicas are not going to listen to a client if it for some reason is still alive. So uh, uh, yeah, the, this uh, reliance on clients for the coordination adds this uh, uh, complexity. Um, as far as the evaluation, uh, so yeah, uh, they implemented the taper, uh, they implemented the key value store on top of taper. Uh, and then they use a uh, Dreadfis, uh, like Twitter workload, uh, uh, kind of toy Twitter and YCSB transaction uh, for the evaluation. And uh, so this figure uh, really shows pretty impressive results uh, in, in a sense that uh, their uh, taper key V uh, can do a lot more throughput than, uh, uh, for example, the, uh, the traditional Paxos backed uh, you know, strongly consistent replication store with the lock, uh, uh, I guess with two, two phase locking for the concurrency control. So they claim that this lock store is uh, pretty much the standard design at uh, the green line. And, you know, it's like three times the throughput and uh, a little bit better latency because of uh, uh, avoiding that uh, unnecessary client to leader leader replicates to the followers and so, so by saving one little RTT, they can improve the overall uh, latency here. Uh, yeah. Um, now, because uh, the system is inconsistent, um, it may uh, abort if, if if these nodes, for example, have you know stale data, or if if the re if the read operation was from some stale data because you read only from only one replica. So, so there are uh, various uh, reasons for uh, aborts, like, uh, you know, the, the read value that you read is actually stale or uh, the, 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 the nodes don't have something, so they need to recover. Um, uh, there is a high contention. So uh, because of contention, the abort may happen because of how replication works. So uh, in this experiment, they uh, looked at the They looked at the uh, abort rates uh, in, in, in the system. Um, and uh, essentially they tried to control the abort rate by uh, having hot keys, right? So they, they run the workload with the Zipfian distribution of keys that they select to work. And uh, 
you know, when, when, when there is a, when there is a relatively low contention, then uh, a taper KV uh, performs, it doesn't have high abort rate, but as uh, you know, you increase the contention, it pretty much becomes very similar to what the optimistic concurrency control does. And I think they say about 30, 40% abort rate uh, when you have pretty much, you know, one hot key uh, that is uh, constantly being packed. And uh, uh, in another experiment, they tried to compare with uh, weakly consistent systems, right? So obviously like Mongo, Cassandra, they don't provide uh, transactional support for, and they don't have the strongly consistent notion for the transactions at all, uh, Redis as well. And they show that, uh, you know, Taper actually, you know, performs decently well compared to, you know, this um, a weaker consistency uh, databases and data stores. So uh, yeah, they, 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 the authors say that this may not be like the most um, uh, fair evaluation just because these other systems you know, do other things and you know, have other features, but uh, uh, nevertheless, it's interesting to see that a linearizable store can, uh, for example, outperform MongoDB, which doesn't have a cross, at least, yeah, in that version, didn't have any kind of cross partition uh, transactions. I'm going to stop uh, the recording right now. <laughs>